So, so the reality, so the reality is, they had a permit for 3,500 people, and they sold over 5,000 tickets. But why was it approved in the first place? Let alone. So, so let's let's start with that. Let's ask the panelists why was this approved in the first place? Why was this allowed to take place in our community with absolutely no public notification or community involvement? No, Mike handed the mic to Jane, and Jane did not approve the park. So. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Rue, and I'm an environmental consultant. I work for DuPont Street Developers, the owner of the site. Um, first, before I get into the party, I would like to thank Peter for um, his presentation. Um, I guess technically we work on opposite sides of the table, but uh, aside from the party, I think we've been doing a really good job of working together as a team. Um, I did not have any problems uh, with anything that he presented tonight. I agreed with everything. Um, we met with um, Mike and Lisa and a couple of members of the community a few weeks ago in an effort to stay transparent in public. And we met with Mike and Lisa um, again last Thursday for the same thing to give them an update on where we stand with the feasibility study, which is coming out soon. Um, at that meeting, I forget exactly the wording I told you, but I did tell you that there was going to be some sort of music event or party at the site on Thursday night. Do you remember what I said? I don't either. So on Thursday, my client was approached with, uh, hey, can we hold a uh, music event at your venue? Where's the venue? Oh, at, at our building. You're right, at our abandoned manufacturing facility next to the. Can I? Across from the senior center. Can you bring up the, um, the site map, please? Where? Thank you. Where did the woman go that was arrested? She's outside. Okay. That, right there. That's it. Okay, so what was presented to us on Thursday was we want to have a party here. Okay, so I'm a geologist, and so when someone says I want to have a party there, I, I don't really know what that means. I guess we assume that there would be something there, it would be something loud, it would be across the street from the senior center. But no one questioned how many people, um, no one questioned when it was going to start or when it was going to end. The questions for me were, does the DDC or city OER control these parcels from an environmental perspective? Is there any environmental reason why they would not let a massive raid officially happen here? And the answer was no. Uh, the decision was made uh, not to have the party, not to let them have the party initially, um, and then that decision was changed. Uh, I was not involved with any of those meetings, why the decision was changed. Uh, there have been a few people involved. And before we go any further, I will let you know that my client, and I guess therefore me, by extension, has been put on notice of potential legal action from the state. Okay, so I'm not going to be totally forthcoming with everything I know, or everything I have, um, but I'll do my best to answer some questions. Okay, um, so, hang on one second. Actually, okay, what do you got? Um, are you saying that Thursday was the first day that any Yes, I that's why. I live opposite the building, and they started preparations on Tuesday. Yep. What were they doing on Tuesday? They were sound testing in uh, scaffolding. They were they really are the order order going on. I have photos of it. I live there. I'm not going to doubt you. But you're saying yeah. you're the first time, the there. first time that I was aware. One second, I'll, I'll get you. One, the first time that I was aware, I was approached for anything to happen here was Thursday morning at 11:30. Also, you're, no, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. I'll get to that in a second. I saw audio too. Why is it? Why, when you're trying to build the trust of the community, would you rent the 
rent out the space in a, in a neighborhood. It's very clearly a neighborhood. It might not seem like that to you, but for all of us who live there, it is very much our neighborhood. And that is like a very destructive, that, yes, sure, have it out in Bushwick, where it's a warehouse district, but not, it, there are homes and seniors and people who are like vulnerable living in this community, and that is a very distrustful thing to do. I wasn't part of the decision making, but why did you use that? My client is here. She's coming up, but I'm, I'm, she's coming up, but I'm giving you, because I'm the environmental consultant, and I'm giving you my story of what's going on. And, and when I'm done talking, Ms. Ehan will give her version to add to this. Okay, and so I can't tell you why, and maybe she can, uh, why the decision was made, just a second, sir, why the decision was made to hold a party here with an unknown number of people for an unknown duration across the street from a, a senior center. And yes, all that is true. Friday morning, I was asked by my client to go to the site and make sure that this was good, and that's when I met the people that were setting up the facility. And they were not setting up the facility here. They were setting up everywhere. The entire building, first, second, and third floors, and if there wasn't water on the roof, they would have been on the roof too. They, uh, well, I'm not saying they weren't, I wasn't there, but that's what they told me. They told me they were not going to party on the roof. They told me they were going to have almost every other area filled, they told me that it was going to start at 10 o'clock at night. I asked, when was it going to end? And they said, Sunday. And I said, when? And they didn't give an answer. The website said 9 in the morning. OK, so with the time change, that's a 12-hour party. He said 5,000 people. The website had 3,500 tickets sold on Friday afternoon. And uh, Saturday night, when I checked, it was um, about 47 or something like that. Um, what did you do with all that information when you suddenly realized that? Well, the first thing I did was I panicked um, because this was not the, what we had sold, what we had been sold. Um, he said he had a contract, um, and my understanding as of now is that he did have a one sided signed contract signed by him, but not signed by my client. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that for now because. Uh, and put on warning for me to say. One, one second, one second. Uh, I assumed at the time that he had permission to be in the building from the owner, and I then went to make sure that, that he, his employees, and any potential remediation equipment in the building was safe. So are you saying that they broke in? No, they didn't break in. I, I, I don't look. I don't. No, I don't think they broke in. I don't. I don't know how they got a key. I don't know who gave. Did you give them a key? I don't know. I don't know who gave them the key. I don't know when they got in there. If they went in Tuesday to look around and say, "Hey, this is perfect," what they told me was that they had a facility set up somewhere else and it was too small. I guess when they started hitting three thousand people, they started looking for a new area. A new location. Why did you shut it down yourself? Everything you're saying doesn't make any sense. Right. What you're saying. Did you tell this information to anyone above you in management? And if so, what did they or did they not do about it? That's what we're all wondering at this point. Okay. So um, I did not shut them down. Maybe we should let her talk at this point since she's higher up in the food chain and she can help us understand what's going on. Oh, first of all, I really, really want to apologize to everybody uh, because I really did not sign that contract and I still have not seen that contract. Uh, but somebody from our organization did um, do something, you know, uh, with that contract. Uh, but I have said no to this. But unfortunately, I did not say it firmly enough. I did not say it strongly enough. I did not oppose it strongly enough to them about this. So I really, really apologize for this. And uh, uh, it's totally um, 
I know it's a totally total disaster when I walk through with Mike in that facility when I see what they set up I'm like I don't know how to put a stop on this. It, it was already kind of too late because I, I still haven't at that point I still haven't seen the contract. I don't know if you know if I say uh, you know shut this up and get out of here. What kind of uh, lawsuit they will come against us? Uh, and yeah, but you, you know, know it's a super fun site. A lot of the kids that we were talking to didn't know anything no, about yeah. the building. We have this growth that to them, and we have we have on Thursday. I gave them a survey, and I clearly crossed out with red tapes to say nobody can get any have any access to the super fun site. That that was very very clearly given to um, whoever that went ahead and uh, arranged the contract with them. 